Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. I was looking through some older images that were rejected for whatever reason, and I stumbled across this shot. Now, it doesn't look like much, but I took it last fall, and the fall colors were really tremendous, and that's why I snapped this shot. But unfortunately, um, I really wasn't paying attention to my camera settings. And if you take a look over here, you can see it was shot at 1 5,000th of a second, f of 5.6, ISO of 400. There really was no reason to shoot at such a high shutter speed. And what happened was, uh, this was a gorge. And uh, you probably see way down here at the bottom, there's some steps. And really way down at the bottom of the gorge was where I was shooting. And... I, it was rather dark down there, so I had to use a little higher of an ISO. So I shot at an ISO of 400. I walked up all these steps, and then I walked across this little footbridge, and I saw these beautiful colors and took this shot, and I really wasn't paying attention to my settings. I never lowered the ISO, so I ended up shooting at that high shutter speed. Also, I exposed for the sky, and I really didn't balance the exposure very well, so it's rather dark. So once I come in here and I start to process it, I'll find that there's really a main problem. So I'll open up shadows and now you can see some of those beautiful colors I was talking about. And I'll bring like the highlights down and then maybe I'll just bump up exposure a little bit to get it a little brighter. Now I'll get a white point. I'll hold the uh, option key on my Mac. I'll key on a PC, move it to the right till I see some white and color bleed through and I'll back it off till that disappears. Then I'll do the same thing with blacks, but I'll leave some of that Clipping. Okay, we see these wonderful colors. I didn't even add any saturation or vibrance. But when I zoom in, look at all the noise. Oh my God, because it was underexposed and because I shot it at ISO of 400, there is just a lot of noise here. That's why I rejected the image. Now, though, I really use denoise a lot and it's really uh, ingrained in my workflow. And I could just get rid of this noise very easily with denoise and the way i would go about doing it is just adjust exactly what i did the tone and that basically is these six sliders i'll set a contrast probably just exposure highlight shadows whites and blacks until i get i could see this noise in here i don't do texture clarity to haze um i probably wouldn't do any vibrance or saturation i'll jump down to detail and if by default lightroom added any sharpening i'd take that all the way down to zero I have my Lightroom set up, so when my cameras, when I import images from my cameras, luminance noise reduction is at zero, and color noise reduction is at 25. Uh, Lightroom's color noise reduction is actually very good, so I just leave it at 25. So I don't have any sharpening going on at all. I don't have really any luminance noise reduction, but there still is a lot of noise. And you can see through in here, even the, the dark areas especially, you can see there's a lot of noise. So I wanna send this, into denoise at this point is where i would do it um, i'll just right click right on the image i'll go down to edit in and we'll go down to i'll try to go down to topaz denoise ai this dialog box pops up because it is a raw file it has to send a copy with lightroom adjustments we're going to send it as a tiff pro photo rgb 16 bits per component with a resolution of 360 and no compression we'll click edit it's in the top left hand corner. We have a progress bar. Lightroom is creating this TIFF file with those specifications, and then it will open that TIFF file up into Denoise. Now, Denoise, the settings on the right will default to whatever I had it last set at, and I have it set up with the four panel view. If you go to the view drop down here, you could see it's called comparison view. I like that because there's actually three different AI modes in Denoise AI. In this way, I could compare all of them to each other. Uh, in the top left-hand corner is the original image without any uh, noise reduction done to it at all. To the immediate right is the Denoise AI noise reduction. Lower left is the AI clear noise reduction. And to the lower right is the low light noise reduction. Now in Denoise AI, apparently last time these were my settings, I kind of like to start out with auto, so I'll put it on auto. It has to re-render, as you could see here. And um, it looks pretty good at first glance. And then if I go down to the AI clear mode, I had that on auto. 
So that's there. And the low light mode auto. Now, just right out of the box, the auto settings for denoise look to be best. But I want to come over here in this dark area and let it re-render and see what it does. It removed most of the noise. It's re you know, has to re-render for all three modes. But I'm going to up the noise a bit, I, the noise reduction a bit. I could see that there still is a little noise in here. So we'll just up it a little bit. That's all I do. I kind of decide on which of the three AI modes I want to use. And then I'll come in and tweak the sliders uh, until I feel that it's working the way I want it or expect it to work. So that looks pretty good right there. Let's come into a really dark area over here. Now, of course, it has to re-render every time you do this. And that looks actually very, very good. So I'm going to settle with the Denoise AI mode. I'll make sure that's active. It will be active when you see this blue around the words Denoise AI, and it will say updated. See how these other ones don't have blue? So this is the mode we're using when I click Apply. So now it will do this noise reduction to that TIFF file that we sent over, and then it will open back up into Lightroom, and then I'll continue my processing in Lightroom from that point forward. There really isn't much left to do here. As you could see, it was really colorful without adding any additional uh, saturation or vibrance, or even doing anything in the HSL tab at all. Um, and there we go. It looks pretty good. Let me bring up the film strip by hitting F6. And we'll click on the original image, and I'll zoom in uh, to an area. I'll hold the Command key and on my Mac and be Control key on a PC, like right there where there's a lot of noise. And click on the one with the noise removed. A lot of noise. Noise removed. And if I go, like, up over here, you can see there's a lot of noise. I might have to go up to View, Lock Zoom Position, and then... Click over here, and you can see it removed all the noise. Hopefully you can see that in the video. Did a good job. So what I would do from this point on now, I would do any texture or clarity that I want to do. If I was adding any vibrance or saturation, I would do it here. I think the only thing I want to do is, uh, as far as color is concerned, I do want to go to the HSL color. And I want to kind of uh, differentiate the yellow from the orange from the red. So I'll go to the yellow, and I'll make the yellows a little brighter, and I'll make the oranges a little darker, something like that. And then reds, see, it's just not affecting a lot. So I'll make that. So I'm just in the luminance sub-tab of the HSL color tab. I don't, I'm not even going to add any saturation. And I'll go to detail, and we'll add some sharpening. I'm going to zoom in. That looks pretty good. And then I'll just go to effects and I'll add a little bit of a darker vignette just to kind of finish it off. And that's it. So that's how I rescued this image um, using Denoise AI just to get rid of that noise because I really screwed up when I was taking the image. I didn't lower my ISO. Um, this was shot with a Nikon camera. It goes down to ISO a 64. And I didn't take advantage of the low ISO. I shot a 400 and I underexposed it, which exacerbated the problem and gave me a lot of noise, especially in those darker areas. So that's it on how I go about sometimes using Denoise AI to fix my screw-ups. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.